Hello everyone. Welcome back to our next session of uh, Skyvet Tech Talks Live, where we take your questions and answer it live. Today's topic is on uh, supervised learning. So just to recap, last time we talked about deep learning and answered some of your questions. I already have a few questions for this time specific to supervised learning. So we'll cover that uh, one at a time. So the first uh, question is, uh, in general, what is actually supervised learning? How does that differ from uh, deep learning? Something we talked about last time. I will give you a very concrete example with that. Uh, this is a plane. It's a wooden plane. And uh, to uh, get a computer or a machine, and when I say machine, it could be a software machine itself, to learn how uh, to really recognize this plane, that, that it is indeed a plane. It needs to extract features. So it needs to figure out that this is a wing, this is uh, the nose, this is usually where the cockpit is, this is uh, the rudder, and so forth. And based on that, it's able to figure out that this is actually a plane. And more important, it could even figure out that this is the wing of the plane. Or if there's something wrong in the wing and you see something burning here, that means the wing is on fire. Not a good thing if it's happening in a real plane. That's the task and that's what supervised learning does. That uh, you need to tag or annotate data needed to extract those features from an image or from a video or from a set of data. So what that means is that uh, once you have the data, the algorithm needs a supervisor to figure that out. And that's what supervised learning is, that it goes in two phases. One is the training phase where you get the data, which is actually tagged first. And that's uh, very specific to supervised learning, that you need that supervisor, you need human beings to tag the data that in this plane, this is the wing. So there'll be a human supervisor who will actually do that, which uh, where you will actually tag that this is the wing of the plane. Once that's done, you have the training phase where this data, this tag or annotated data is taken and this information goes to the training phase. And then based on that, an inference is made. And that's what a supervised learning algorithm is, uh, simply put. To summarize, algorithm that use some sort of, uh, this sort of supervision techniques are called supervised deep learning algorithm or simply supervised learning. Our next question is, are supervised algorithms new? Very quick question, very good question. Historically, supervised learning algorithms were constrained by compute storage data available to build, run, and maintain such systems, especially at a large scale. There have been marginal changes to algorithm itself used to train large scale AI systems, especially based on supervised learning. Nevertheless, the fundamental basis of these supervised learning algorithms have not changed for decades. Majority of the AI solutions that are available today use deep learning. Specifically, that use deep learning are based on supervised learning algorithms, where the amount of quality of the data determines the accuracy of the results. Just to summarize, Supervised learning, not new, and uh, as you also may uh, also may have uh, learned so far that there could be some issues when you don't train the model correctly, or you don't train a supervised learning supervised learning algorithm correctly with the right type of data. The quality of the data matters. Okay, our next question is uh, about biases. Bias in AI systems and how are they related to supervised learning algorithm design? That relates to the last question where we covered that in supervised learning algorithm, the step one is generating that annotated data. 
the submarine needs to annotate the structure or the features of the spleen. And that goes to your training phase and then the inference. So if uh, the data is not correct, if the quality of the data is not correct, or somebody mislabeled this data, and usually people will not mislabel the data, it will be the case that there is not enough data points of label. So it's hard to really say that this wing is actually a wing or this plane is actually a plane. Because what the algorithm needs to do is, uh, it still needs to make the model of this aircraft based on thousands and thousands of uh, photos and images of this plane where each feature of this plane is tagged. So if there's not enough data, you will land up in trouble that this plane sometimes will not be called a plane. If you have uh, the wrong amount of data, then also you have a problem. If you have uh, data that's not very realistic, then you also have a problem. And that's another problem where, which is actually called uh, uh, data shift, where you train a supervised learning algorithm based on data that's not really related to real world. And that's probably one of the reasons where, uh, where biases in these algorithm comes. So based on, for example, if uh, your uh, facial recognition algorithm uh, supervised learning facial recognition algorithm is not trained on faces that is as diverse as possible, have different races, then obviously some races or some faces will be much easily recognized, some won't. And that has been an issue in the past where some of the even major deployments of facial recognition algorithms have shown to have biases. And that's very much true for supervised learning algorithm. That uh, algorithm in itself has not changed, but the data is the key. So if you don't have the right type of data or if the data quality is not good, you will end up in problems. There's another interesting thing about uh, supervised learning algorithm. Remember that last time we talked about deep learning, how these are learning systems. So the computer is trying to make a model. And in this case, this is through supervised learning. There have been cases where uh, even if you have the same type of data, the algorithm is able to create a model, but that model each time the data is generated, or if you have more data, it may create a different model and these different models may not be same, it may not be similar, and in some cases, they may be totally different. So the predictability of the results from these algorithms are, is hard. Hence the transparency and uh, contestability. These are some of the things we talked about in the last lectures, and if you wanna know more about these topics, please go to our uh, YouTube uh, channel. I believe we have one more question. Why are supervised learning algorithms popular? In other words, is it answer to all our problems? This is very true that uh, when we look at, in deep learning, supervised learning algorithms more or less form close to 80 or 90% of the deployments worldwide. I would say there's a five person that's unsupervised learning, and then there's, and then there are more specific algorithm that forms one to two person. But most of the time, majority is supervised learning. The reason why supervised learning is popular is actually twofold. One is uh, that uh, it is to some extent based on data. So if you have enough data you are able to get a well-trained system 
and generate results. The algorithm itself is easy. It has not changed. So we know much more about how a supervised algorithm works. In other words, people know much more about supervised learning than, for example, unsupervised learning or self-supervised learning algorithms. That's why there is so much adoption. The second reason being that uh, supervised learning algorithm was one of the first one to be used in commercial deployments. It started at a very small scale and then it actually expanded. And scaling one of these algorithms is in a task of its own. So right now the systems of label either where it's running in a big data center, for example, facebook.com or at google.com running uh, uh, Google Maps or running uh, Google Search. A lot of these algorithms are based on supervised learning algorithms, so we know much, much more about it. And more important, how to scale these systems. Most of these deployments are also well documented, so if somebody else wants to use this, they could do that. There's a problem in it, and uh, that's why we want to be careful about when we are use, reusing something that works for one specific use case to another. For example, autonomous car. My belief is that most of the algorithms used in autonomous cars from various vendors are still using supervised learning or some flavor of supervised learning which is actually the wrong approach. If you think about it, that if you're, you're get, trying to get a car to uh, drive itself in a very dynamic environment, yes, it's similar to a task that we humans do, which is we walk around and we could do it in a very easy way. And yes, it is to some extent supervision, how we actually have been brought up. So there was some supervision involved but in most cases, it was much more on a hit and trial basis where we fell, we, uh, where we didn't know what to do and we made wrong decisions and then we corrected ourselves. But that's not how supervised learning actually works. That's where, that's when we are talking about uh, evolution. That's where we're talking about more or less raw data and unsupervised learning. And that's why to some extent, the, the whole thesis that we would have level five autonomous cars in 2020, a couple of years back, was just false. It was just not possible because the autonomous car industry is just in the wrong path. You cannot have autonomous car when you are focusing most of your effort on generating lots and lots of data and still using the same supervised learning algorithm. Yes, it works great on search, on even facial recognition, but it will not work when you're trying to get a car to drive itself, which is much more natural to uh, how human could do. And that's where, that's where supervised learning is not the answer to all our problems. There's some use cases where supervised learning can work, but then there are others where supervised whirling will just not work. We will have the recording of this uh, session on our YouTube channel. Uh, you are more than welcome to re reach out to us if you have any other questions. And uh, as a sort of reminder, we are hiring. If you'd like to join us, please uh, write to me.